I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and Fintech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Rob Viglioni, the team lead and the co-founder of Horizon. Rob, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me, Ashton. You're very welcome. I'm excited to do a deep dive into the Horizon technology platform. Uh, could you please start by giving and explaining the goals behind creating Horizon and, and how it rose up from uh, cryptocurrency? Sure, yeah, so Horizon was actually a response to a couple of deficiencies I saw in the industry. So things on the governance side, sustainability, creating a, a coherent ecosystem that rewards people on the margin for participating, and also extending privacy technology really into the commercial domain. So with Horizon, you can see where we're positioning ourselves as a privacy-oriented platform. Mm -hmm. And are there specific problems uh, with current blockchain technology that you're solving through Horizon? Namely, is there a privacy problem right now and are there other problems? For sure there are, yeah, exactly. So uh, privacy technology that we have doesn't necessarily scale very well. So we're focusing on scalability of the tech and in particular, our sidechain technology is really the novel, unique thing that we've been building. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And we'll get into the sidechains a little bit uh, later in the interview. I do want to ask you about that because that seems very interesting. But for the viewers that are familiar with Bitcoin blockchain and the Ethereum blockchain, could you give uh, you know, a clear-cut differentiation on you know, what is the difference between Horizons blockchain and Ethereum? Yeah, so the, the big thing is, so we, we came from the Bitcoin tech stack, but our, our, uh, our big innovation is the sidechain technology. So basically, we have a core blockchain, just like Bitcoin has, but all of our application-specific stuff will reside on their own sidechain. So basically, blockchains that are interoperable with our main blockchain, really for security and, and economies of scale. Mm -hmm. um, so the big difference here with Ethereum is Ethereum has all of the scripting language in one blockchain. So basically you do everything, all smart contracts in a single blockchain. In our system, it'll be, you can have a tokenization sidechain, you can have a smart contracting sidechain, you could have a sidechain that does invoice factoring. So really everything gets carved out into its more efficient domain so that it's not competing with the entire network. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And with Bitcoin at its core, you can't really do smart contracts on there. What kind of, have you built your own technology? Are you integrating something like Rootstock to allow for smart contracts and dApps on a Bitcoin core technology? So we've actually built our own. It's called Zendu, is our sidechain technology. So it's launching, it, our sidechain technology is really the interoperability layer between our Bitcoin-like core blockchain and the, the sidechain. So actually the first sidechain that we're launching, I, I know you did an interview with Charles Hoskinson from mm -hmm. IOHK and Cardano. Our first sidechain is going to be a Cardano-like uh, blockchain, actually mm. running as a Horizon sidechain. Very interesting. And mm -hmm. is there a specific reason uh, to choose the Cardano blockchain over something like the Ethereum blockchain, which has more smart contracts on it? There is, yeah. So the, the technology actually lends itself very well to what we're trying to do. So it's a very uh, academically rigorous, peer-reviewed proof-of-stake system. It is just very efficient for doing the type of sidechain work that we needed to, to be the workhorse for initially. Now, the you know we, we're also considering integrating an Ethereum-like sidechain, um, but uh, quite frankly, there was much more functionality than we actually needed. So we wanted to start mm -hmm. very simple, and then you know, build a very elegant architecture, and then layer on what we absolutely need versus kind of put everything there just because we can. Mm -hmm. Great. I'd like to take a step back quickly um, to the history of Horizon. And I believe it actually started as a, a cryptocurrency that was under a different name and you transitioned into a blockchain platform. Can you speak on uh, that journey and, and how Horizon has come to be? Absolutely. We launched in 2017 as a project called Zencash, so a privacy-oriented cryptocurrency. And the, the goal of Zencash at the time was really um, changing the economics of how these blockchains work. So we, we wanted to recognize that more than just miners participate in a, a healthy ecosystem. So we started rewarding different stakeholder classes. Mm -hmm. We built out a very large network. We have 40,000 full nodes in our network right now. So the largest in the industry. Uh, and then the next space there was actually taking the zero knowledge cryptography that we were learning by forking from a Zcash code base. Mm -hmm. Uh, and extending that now into the sidechain system and focusing specifically on commercial use cases. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And with these sidechains, this is not some small one-day project. I believe 
that you've been working on the side chains for you know a year or so. Um, can you give uh, a roadmap of how long have you been working on the side chain part for? What specifically is live right now, and how long is it going to take to complete all of the side chain part that you're looking at completing? So this is a really good point. In fact, I had a conversation with a community member earlier today about you know why is it taking so long to get side chains to market? Uh, well, when you're doing core protocol work, you you need to practice safe crypto, as we like to say. So you have to be very rigorous with what you're doing. You can't, you can't rush things. You don't want mistakes in your core code base that could destroy the entire ecosystem. So our approach is very, very rigorous. We started with R&D, and then we prototyped, and then we started building the, the test net system. So where we are today is we launched an alpha version of the technology last October. Mm -hmm. And alpha was really just a demonstration for developers to start playing around with what we're doing. So it showed that you can commit Zen, for example, testnet Zen into a testnet sidechain. Uh, and that was it. It had a play consensus, basically no real consensus. It was just saying we could run something else as a sidechain to this testnet main chain. And that was it. Now mm -hmm. we're going live in actually at the end of next week with beta. Beta is closing the loop, so now you can send your testnet then back to the testnet main chain, and it'll have a working implementation of Ouroboros Prowse, and the bonus for our community and for other zero-knowledge um, you know, community developers is we've actually built from, or extended significantly, uh, a, a great cryptographic library to go along with this. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be a very exciting deliverable for us. Now, going through the rest of the year, we're implementing the next evolution of this technology and working towards production level system. Great, and you mentioned uh, a few questions back about commercial uses. Once this is all said and done and functionally working need, and looking at applying it into businesses, mm -hmm. do you, uh, as, as your team, have a specific uh, uh, path that you'd like to take in terms of an industry or are you really just putting the platform out there to be used across all industries? Where do you see this being used in the business world? Yeah, so we're actually, we're on one hand, very much technologists. And on the other hand, we, we launched uh, a commercial entity called Horizon Labs, raised VC capital, and it went out and got a bunch of clients uh, so we can actually bring this technology to market. So we're, you know, we, we view, we tackle it from both sides, but mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, I believe that you have to have real uh, business use cases to drive real economics of these systems. So they're not just speculative vehicles. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So uh, it, it all comes down to the development first of all, because if it's hard to develop on, then it will be tough to have those applications to be put into the workforce, right? Exactly. And and you know, you asked uh, specifically what industries or what clients do we have early? Uh, we're actually we have a big uh, interest in digital invoicing and factoring of those invoices. So very much fintech related, mm -hmm. uh, and that's really our core. We also have a client in the gaming sector. Uh, but our product, the way that we look at this is really, we want to have the technology out there that firms can grab and deploy themselves versus mm -hmm. us having to develop everything on our own. Mm -hmm. So truly, this is a platform that we're bringing to market. Mm -hmm. And when you spoke about the developers, you mentioned that you had cryptographic libraries and libraries can make it a lot easier for developers mm -hmm. to you know, get a head start on, on the development. Are there other incentives for developers to, to be developing on Horizon as opposed to uh, the NEO blockchain or Ethereum blockchain? Definitely. So we're the first blockchain that organically or endogenously rewards developers to launch their own their own applications. Mm -hmm. So if you're a developer and you launch a Horizon sidechain based application, you participate in the revenue stream. So a percentage of transaction fees mm -hmm. on that sidechain go to the developer that launched the blockchain. So actually, it's really for the first time in this industry, a recognition of you have to directly reward developers mm -hmm. in order to make these things scale and go viral. That's great. And is that with the same Zencash cryptocurrency or has it been renamed? And can you talk a little bit about any of the other purposes of the cryptocurrency on the platform? Yeah, so our, our project is called Horizon. The, the coin itself is just called Zen. We dropped the cash. Uh, and actually, the economics of this work out really well. So if, if you think about like this from a finance perspective, it's where Zen is going to be a collateral asset, much like Ethereum is a collateral asset on the smart contracts, mm -hmm. but it has the money supply characteristics of Bitcoin. So a mm -hmm. truncated money supply that doesn't grow over mm -hmm. time, right? It's capped at 21 million, just like Bitcoin, but it's required for staking on sidechains. These are all proof of stake sidechains okay. and for transaction gas on each of the sidechains. So actually, it's a, there's a big source of de demand for Zen 
it goes well beyond its use as a currency. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I haven't heard of uh, Bitcoin Core technology, but with proof of stake. Do you see a, a clear uh, advantage in that? And why did you choose that over Bitcoin's traditional proof of work? No, definitely. And we're actually a hybrid. So the core, the main blockchain okay. is proof of work, just like Bitcoin or, okay. or more technically like Zcash. Mm -hmm. So we fork from Zcash tech stack. So we use Equihash proof of work. But the side chains, we want to be very scalable. And we want them, you know, it in net to just be able to deploy very quickly. And proof of stake was for us a natural uh, pathway because we have a very large staked node network already. Mm -hmm. So we already have 40,000 full nodes that are mm. staked. So these, this was the whole point of that was to build up the network that now we can roll into the sidechain system. Very interesting. And that was going to be my next question about mm -hmm. uh, a level of decentralization of the platform. How much does your team care about having a fully decentralized platform? And it sounds like you guys are already past that threshold. You know, to, to be honest, that we care a lot, but there's a lot more that we have to do. So we have a roadmap for decentralization. And what I like to say is decentralization is a journey, not a destination. So mm -hmm. we're decentralizing right now the core architecture of what we have as, as an ecosystem, right? A main chain with function specific or application specific blockchains that act as side chains. Um, mm -hmm. There are many other elements of decentralization, right? We have a very large node network, um, but we want to now the next step would be decentralizing the tracking and automated payments for that large node network, right? We, we have a treasury pool, which is really important to fund the team in development. But now the next layer is we need to layer in a decentralized voting system for how resources are used. So we have a, a very rigorous roadmap for decentralization, but mm -hmm. it's really one step at a time. Definitely. You definitely have a lot on your plate. And <laughs> so what would you say is one of the biggest challenges you foresee as the Horizon platform continues to grow? So the biggest challenge is right now, the, the proximate challenge is volatility of the markets. So mm -hmm. as a project, our treasury is denominated in Zen. And so you mm -hmm. can imagine as you're trying to resource load project plans and hire people to do work, you need to flatten out that volatility for your team or at least manage the volatility. But from a budgeting perspective, perspective it's very difficult. Uh, from a competitive posture, this industry, it looks to be a little saturated, but I still argue it's very early days. Mm -hmm. And no single project, no project has actually come up with a killer use case yet that actually justifies the economics of the system. So it's a wide open path for, for competition, even though it might look like some early players are really entrenched. I argue that most people in the world have never touched blockchain. So actually, there's still a very large market up for grabs. Definitely. And is your team expanding right now or are you looking for any more partnerships um, or test users or are you guys just head down grinding away? Uh, well, both. So we, we have what I would consider a largely complete team and our headquarters is in Milan, Italy. So a little inconvenient given the recent uh, vir virus outbreak. Mm -hmm. But because we worked uh, so well as a distributed team, it was a seamless transition. We do have a few open positions for developers, but by and large, we have in-house cryptographers, we have in-house mathematicians, we have uh, all layers of in-house developers, everyone from core C++ blockchain developers to you know web developers and everything mm -hmm. in between. So we have a pretty pretty good full stack business uh, you know running right now. And given the recent volatility, I'll say we're, we're being more conservative than anything. But I think also when when everyone else is panicked, it's also a good opportunity to be bold. So actually, we have a big software release coming up next week. Like I said, it's a big deal for the industry. The cryptographic libraries we're releasing, I think, are going to be a big deal for the industry, especially for the geeks of the industry. And that's where you want to focus initially. Um, so we're, we're kind of this combination of being conservative and bold at the same time mm -hmm. and waiting for this volatility to die down. Definitely. And all the best with that, Rob. And for the viewers that are looking to learn more information uh, or follow up with these updates that are upcoming, what's the best way for them to learn more and to reach out? So horizon.global is the one-stop shop for everything. And on there, I recommend join our community discussion on Discord, Telegram. Uh, you can sign up for our newsletter so you actually get all, all the updates you know, as you get them. And if you want to try out just a little bit of Zen, and what I tell people is you don't have to be fully convinced on cryptocurrency before you start getting in. Come visit our faucet, get zen.cash, and we'll you know, give you a little bit of Zen, download a wallet, try it out. It's really the best way just to get onboarded. Great. I'll leave those links in the description box below. 
Thank you so much for your time, Rob. That's all the time that we have for the interview today. Uh, but let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashton. It's been a pleasure.